of a problem with that. No sensei. No mercy. Johnny Lawrence Timeline The Karate Kid franchise was a breath of fresh air for the kids growing up in the 80s. The action scene in Hollywood was dominated by jacked up guys slinging machine guns and machetes. The Karate Kid featured regular teenagers with regular problems. Then we came across Cobra Kai, the series based on the movie franchise that featured a new set of characters for teens of this era to relate with. Although the main protagonist of the series was Daniel LaRusso, the character of Johnny Lawrence was the the one that grabbed the attention of the audience. Let's explore the character of Johnny further in this video to learn more about his development from a delinquent to a sensei that teens look up to. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you and let's begin. Hear you. Yes, sensei. Then what are you? I'm a winner, sensei. Louder. I'm a winner. Early life of Johnny Lawrence Johnny Lawrence was a troubled kid growing up. Laura Lawrence and Johnny's absentee father welcomed him into the world on August 20th, 1967. The recollections he has of his father are pretty fleeting. When he was a little child, his mother, Laura, came home and told him that she would marry Sid and that their lives would be better. He stayed up late that night playing with some of his toys. They would be taken care of since Sid was extremely wealthy. Johnny became enraged by this and screamed before running to his room. Laura Laura uncovered a box of goods that had formerly belonged to Johnny's father and had been preserved by the youngster as a souvenir when she went to his room to explain the situation to him. This angered Laura, who vowed to burn the box and everything within since she believed Johnny's father had abandoned them. Sid Weinberg, a wealthy but highly violent guy that Laura married, intimidated Laura and Johnny with his wealth. Sid began to mostly pick on Johnny, verbally and emotionally abusing him. By playing music on his Walkman, Johnny discovered how to keep his distance from the violence. Johnny was tormented by the other children at school and had no friends. Johnny came upon Cobra Kai, a karate dojo where John Kreese was instructing his students in self-defense in 1979. This immensely impressed Johnny and he told his parents right away that he wanted to start training there. Sid disagreed with Johnny's decision because he had had already failed drum lessons, magic classes, and other such endeavors. However, he yielded when Laura made the suggestion that it would help Johnny make friends. He's 12 years old. They go through phases, they try new okay, things. Okay, fine, I'll write the goddamn check. I'll make it up. After enrolling, Johnny was placed under the tutelage of Sensei John Kreese, where he made quick progress in his education. After Johnny received his blue belt one day, Kreese discovered him sobbing. Johnny recounted his issues at home, but Kreese showed little sign of understanding. He sternly reprimanded Johnny, telling him that the moment his tears dried up, he had turned into a loser and that he did not train losers. Johnny was made to yell that he had won by Crease, and in doing so, he shed the meek, frightened persona he had up to that moment. When Johnny finally entered the 1981 All Valley Karate Tournament, he was defeated by Daniel in the finals. But by making Daniel battle difficult, he made Kreese understand he would not lose again. Cobra Kai members Bobby Brown, Dutch, Tommy and Jimmy were close friends of his. They joined together to create a buddy group that frightened and made fun of younger pupils for acting like losers. They had a high opinion of themselves since they were the strongest students at school, dated various females and rode motorbikes. They were all on the soccer squad for their school. As sophomores in high school, Johnny and his pals saw the movie Rocky III in the summer. They were situated behind several female students. One of the females, a blonde called Ali Mills, rose up and challenged Dutch after he hurled milk duds at the girls. Johnny and Ali eventually got together and dated for two years. Ali ended their relationship when Johnny missed her birthday in the summer before their senior year while drinking with his pals. Johnny and his Cobra Kai pals ride their motorcycles to a beach party on the last night of the season. Although one of the pals claims that their criminal histories have been sealed, Johnny wants to move past his history as an ex-degenerate and put it behind him. 
When Tommy mentions that Ali Mills is at the party, Johnny's focus shifts to observing Ali with an unknown boy, which causes jealousy. As Ali is old history, Bobby and Jimmy encourage Johnny to use his newly discovered optimism toward her. Despite this, Johnny still drives down to confront Ali, but she immediately rejects all of his overtures and the two start to fight. Daniel LaRusso, the youngster, steps in and defends Ali. Johnny soon knocks Daniel to the ground and the two start fighting over Ali's objections. After winning, Johnny flees, but not before Daniel sucker punches him. Daniel is periodically harassed by Johnny and the rest of the Cobra Kai gang in the weeks that follow, which unintentionally causes Daniel to be dismissed from the soccer team. Daniel considers entering a dojo to defend himself, but when he finds out the dojo he visited was Cobra Kai, Johnny and his pals get another opportunity to harm Daniel by overwhelming him with their motorbikes and pushing him into a ravine. The harassment seemed to stop after that, Johnny was ready to smoke a joint during a Halloween school function when Daniel placed a hose over him and doused him with water. Enraged, Johnny collected his companions, who were also dressed as skeletons, and followed Daniel along the street until they trapped him at a chain link fence and beat him as payback. Bobby argues that Daniel has had enough, but Johnny orders Dutch to hold Daniel up so he may kick Daniel in the air. Johnny makes an attempt to continue pounding Daniel while making a move that if connected with his intended victim, very likely would have killed Daniel. At that point, Mr. Miyagi abruptly arrives, leading Dutch to drop Daniel and Johnny to miss his shot. Then, with ease, Mr. Miyagi defeats Johnny and his crew and rescues Daniel. Later, Miyagi and Daniel visited the Cobra Kai dojo and begged Kreese's pupils to leave Daniel alone. However, Kreese was so obstinate that he and Miyagi both decided to have Daniel fight against the Cobra Kai in the All Valley Tournament. Then Miyagi asked Kreese to instruct his pupils to leave Daniel alone until the competition. In agreement, Kreese ordered Johnny and his crew to avoid Daniel until the start of the competition. After that, Daniel only sometimes saw them, but he openly mocked Johnny and his pals on one occasion since he knew they couldn't hurt him. Johnny was enraged by Daniel's taunting and was on the verge of attacking him. Bobby stopped Johnny from attacking Daniel and reminded him of Kreese's instruction not to engage in combat. Another opportunity opportunity for harassment arises at school when Daniel and Ali reaffirm the truce between Johnny and his gang. It initially appears that they will harm Daniel, but when a teacher appears and gives Daniel a long and tedious lesson, Johnny and his gang leave, unwilling to wait for a fight or endure the tedious lecture. Johnny would attend a social gathering at the Encino Oaks Country Club, where many members, including Ali Mills and her family, would be present. Johnny danced with Mrs. Mills while Mr. Mills had been dancing with Ali. Whenever a dance routine was in progress, Johnny begged Ali to continue it, which she did. She then refused Johnny's request for a truce as the two began dancing. Johnny then grabbed her and forced a kiss on her to make sure Daniel LaRusso saw him while spying on them from the kitchen. Ali naturally became furious about this and punched Johnny. When the All Valley Tournament Day finally came, Johnny rocked his way right up to the finals where he faced off against Daniel LaRusso his then adversary. Johnny went to Crease after Daniel had won the first two points and when he urged him to sweep the leg, Johnny was shocked and horrified. He realized that Crease had gone too far. As a result of Johnny's actions, Daniel was able to tie the game by sweeping Johnny's foot and engaging in more vigorous combat. But in the end, Daniel used the crane technique to overcome Johnny, thus taking the competition. After that, Johnny tells Daniel he's okay and hands him the winning trophy. As soon as the competition is over, Johnny and Kreese argue in the parking lot. Johnny contends that he gave everything to it and didn't think being in second place was all that terrible. Infuriated by the comment and Johnny's defeat, Kreese tells him he is no longer on the squad. He steals Johnny's trophy, smashes it, and scolds him for being a loser. Johnny yells at Kreese and calls him sick, but Kreese instantly grabs Johnny and chokes him from behind. With the exception of Dutch, Johnny's pals attempted to protect him from Kreese but were either attacked or threatened with violence. When Mr. Miyagi intervenes after observing the events, Kreese is finally rendered helpless. Miyagi honks his nose, indicating that life is a harsher punishment than death for someone who doesn't forgive. He then pretends to deliver a fatal blow. Then, when Johnny and his pals dispose of their Cobra Kai GIs to indicate their resignation,
information from the dojo, Daniel and Mr. Miyagi leave Crease in the parking lot. After the events of 1984, the All Valley Tournament, Johnny and his friends left the Cobra Kai dojo for good. Johnny's life after the 1984 tournament. Johnny's life has deteriorated over the course of the three decades since the tournament in 1984. He acknowledged that he partied throughout his 20s and most of his 30s. He attended community college for a brief while before having to leave due to an incident. He had a history of fighting and public drunkenness with the authorities, but Sid's influence allowed him to avoid heavier criminal punishments. He and his high school friend Dutch were involved in an altercation at a country club in 1994 that led to Dutch being charged. Nevertheless, Johnny was once more exempt due to Sid's influence. The benefit of having a wealthy stepfather that kept Johnny from facing the consequences that others in his situation did while he built up his criminal record. Later in life, Sid charged Johnny with stealing from him, which Johnny could not refute. During these years, Johnny mentioned trips with his high school classmates to Mexico and Reno, Nevada, where they all engaged in excessive drinking prostitution and other vices. Johnny took on odd jobs to maintain himself, his drinking and the kind of life he had become accustomed to. Johnny eventually received his construction worker certification. He grew close to Shannon Keene, a fellow alcoholic and addict in the late 1990s or the early 2000s. Robert Robbie Keene, their only child, was born after Shannon became pregnant. However, Johnny's mother passed away just a week before Robbie was born. The death of his mother, the one person who actually believed in him pushed him further into sadness. Shannon gave birth at the hospital across the street while Johnny was inebriated at a diner on the day Robbie was born. As a result of Johnny's absence, Robbie's upbringing was marked by little parental involvement or visitation. Instead, Johnny decided to leave because he thought Shannon could manage to be a single parent. Sid eventually severed his financial ties to him and ejected him from his home. Still, he continued to watch out for Johnny through his attorneys, preventing Johnny's offenses from being more severe than they were. Further alarmed by his setbacks, Johnny stuck to his old ways of being a nuisance and carried on with his illegal escapades like partying, not paying child support and having an incident at Applebee's that led to a ban. Johnny used his construction degree and was hired as a house developer to better support himself and his habits. He moved into a run-down apartment building in Reseda after drifting from job to job and his life devolved into working and drinking all the time. You're gonna be my karate teacher? No. I'm gonna be your sensei. Sensei Johnny Lawrence and the revival of Cobra Kai. While residing in Reseda in 2017, Johnny worked as a home renovation contractor but was let off following a dispute with a picky client. After that, Johnny went to a convenience shop where he saw some high school kids harassing Miguel Diaz, one of his neighbors. Once they had forced Miguel into his Pontiac Firebird, the delinquents provoked Johnny. Johnny was taken into custody following a brief skirmish in which he defeated the student posse. He is then freed from police custody the next day. When he gets home, Sid, his stepfather, greets him, tells him he's had enough of his issues and offers to buy him out of his life. That evening, while drinking at home, Johnny gets a flashback to his time in high school and decides to take a drive. After traveling across the city at night, he arrives at the All Valley Sports Arena where he had lost to Daniel LaRusso and was almost strangled to death by John Kreese, his sensei. Then, Yasmin's auto Mobile, which was also being driven by two other females, collided with Johnny's Pontiac Firebird, bringing him back to the present, and he was furious. He tried to pursue the adolescents, but his car was damaged, which hindered him from doing so. He has his automobile hauled to Daniel LaRusso's auto store, where he finally meets Daniel for the first time in 34 years. Daniel is delighted to meet Johnny, and he receives free auto repair. Johnny identifies one of the teens from the previous night as Daniel's daughter while he's at the dealership. Following his visit to the dealership, Johnny decides to relaunch Cobra Kai and Miguel, his bullied neighbor, enrolls as his first pupil. While giving Miguel a lesson, Johnny receives a call from Robbie's school's principal informing him that his kid was found with narcotics. Robbie responds, if that is true, he will turn into his father to an incense Johnny's warnings about the perils of drugs and how he will 
waste his life over the phone. Hurt by the remark, Johnny begs the principal to inform Robbie's mother, who is nowhere to be seen, of the situation. After the call, Johnny returned to Miguel and instructed him on how to use motivation by visualizing his opponent while he punched the dummy. Another day, when Johnny was filling out insurance documents in his office, Daniel contacted him to discuss the problem of being detained for the altercation with the youths since one of them was a potential suitor for his daughter. Without knowing the whole context, they start insulting each other. However, they don't engage in a physical altercation since neither wants to return to their high school days. Daniel scolds Johnny for being a loser who can't handle his own son, but Johnny responds with the insult that Daniel should take care of his own affairs because her daughter's boyfriend and his friends assaulted his pupil who was smaller than them. While Daniel's problems with his own children are concealed by his social class, this scenario demonstrates that Johnny is far more conscious of his problems than Daniel is, despite the fact that Johnny is poor and in a failed relationship. The financial and family tides are slowly moving against Daniel and in favor of Johnny. Miguel was Cobra Kai's lone pupil for a few months until he gained popularity and a large dojo. He ultimately makes his way to Sid's home and offers him the whole sum of money he spent to repurchase Cobra Kai. After telling Sid he has never required his money, he bids the man the last farewell because he is no longer necessary in his life. After that, Johnny decides to make peace with his son Robbie. He hears a disturbance outside his apartment and finds Daniel's cousin and some motorcycle thugs destroying his car. Infuriated, Johnny beats the thugs and demands information about Daniel's cousin's residence from him. Daniel honestly asserts that he had not nothing to do with it and is shocked by Louis's actions. Amanda, who offers Johnny to have breakfast with them, diffuses the situation when Johnny goes to Daniel's house to confront him. By providing Johnny with the vehicle of his choosing from the LaRusso Auto Group, Daniel atones for the lost vehicle. Daniel and Johnny start to get along during this time and they even go to Daniel's old apartment and have a drink there. The two then return to the LaRusso residence where they resolve to engage in one more altercation. However, Johnny learns that Daniel has been instructing his kid in karate. Daniel kicks Robbie out of his house after Johnny pushes him into his karate medals out of rage. After a night of excessive drinking, Johnny takes his class to the All Valley Tournament where he inspires them by telling them that they got there by winning the first round. With Aisha Robinson advancing to the quarterfinals, Hawk to the semifinals, and Miguel to the finals after defeating 2017 All Valley winner Xander Stone, Cobra Kai is clearly present at the competition. Miguel defeated Robbie in the last round after engaging in unsportsmanlike behavior. He apologizes to Daniel and Robbie as the round comes to a conclusion, and Daniel congratulates him on his victory. After Johnny has celebrated his hollow triumph in the dojo, knowing that he has alienated his son and led his pupils astray, a cloaked man enters and congratulates Johnny. He recognizes the figure as Kreese, his former sensei. The return of John Kreese. Kreese's survival has Johnny in disbelief. However, he continues to be furious at Kreese and even assaults him. He first finds it difficult but eventually defeats Kreese. As soon as he places him in the chokehold, he recalls Kreese chokeholding him after the 1984 tournament. He displays kindness by letting him go since he doesn't want to be like him. Kreese, on the other hand, does not share his sentiments and kicks him. Kreese tries to get Johnny to join him in the dojo, but Johnny rejects rejects him because he is a better person and understands that he is still wicked. At the dojo, he chastises Miguel and Hawk for their shoddy performance in the competition, declares that cheating is no longer acceptable, reduces all of his pupils to the rank of white belt and has Miguel and Hawk perform 50 push-ups. Johnny cautions Miguel that there is a thin line between mercy and honor and that he paid a high price for doing so in the past. After a contentious meeting with Daniel and Robbie, Johnny is sad and crestfallen. When Kreese repairs his trophy from the 1984 competition and apologizes for his actions, Johnny forgives him and lets him co-teach. Johnny assigns remedial training to his students to help them with their mood while they are acting silly during a session. He asks the children to mix the cement, after which he borrows a friend's cement mixer. Johnny commands many youngsters to enter the drum and warns them that if they don't make the drum move on their own, they will turn into live statues that are cement and frozen in time. 
The youngsters learned from Johnny that they would stagnate exactly like cement that is left in one location for too long that would solidify and get trapped. Chris thanks Johnny for helping the kids turn around and offered to buy him a beer despite his little worry that the lesson might have been taken too far. Daniel approaches Johnny while he is strolling with Chris to inform him that Shannon shouldn't be living with Robbie since she hasn't paid her power bills. However, he is surer than ever that Cobra Kai wants to destroy him once he encounters Crease. Daniel decides not to tell Johnny about Robbie because he is angry at him for being stupid enough to let the person Mr. Miyagi protected him from coming back into his life. When Miguel and Hawk learn that Robbie is Johnny's son, they accuse Johnny of being unfair to them for dishonorably assaulting his kid and go so far as to confront him. Although Robbie is his son, Johnny makes it clear that he does not condone cheating and orders the group to keep their mouths shut. Nevertheless, he quickly admits to Miguel how horribly wrong he was with Robbie and that what he values most about his position as sensei is Miguel's aptitude for learning and his ability to absorb information. Johnny thinks Daniel is trying to steal his clients when he promotes Miyagi-Do Karate as a tuition-free dojo. Despite privately telling Amanda that Johnny understands his limitations, unlike Chris, Daniel is trying to stop Chris by doing this. Miyagi-Do's demonstration at a carnival is abruptly overshadowed by Cobra Kai's energetic performance, which is engineered by Kreese and set to loud rock music. Johnny receives a standing ovation after crushing three burning wood blocks at the conclusion of the performance, demonstrating to the audience that Cobra Kai truly deserved to win the recent All Valley competition. This contrasts with Daniel's failed attempt to duplicate the iconic ice block break he performed in Japan. The next day, Johnny is successful in enlisting two new pupils who saw his Valley Fest performance. The next day, Johnny is successful in enlisting two new pupils who saw his Valley Fest performance. Stingray, the owner of a hardware business who hopes to realize his boyhood goal and female adolescent Tori Nichols. Johnny is skeptical after learning from Miguel that Kreese's claims don't line up. He enters a homeless shelter after Kreese. When the two finally meet, Kreese says that he's been residing at the homeless shelter for a considerable time since he could not re-enlist in the army because they needed young recruits. Johnny has complete faith in Kreese since he is aware of the blows he's endured throughout the years. However, under Johnny's watch, Kreese poisons the minds of some of Johnny's trainees, especially Hawk, and influences them to become crueler. Daniel confronts Johnny about burning his dojo, but Johnny claims he has nothing to do with it and was not aware Kreese had given Hawk and some of his other pupils the order to do so. Then Johnny attempts to convince one of them to admit that they ruined the dojo by punishing them, but no one breaks. However, before leaving for the day, Johnny gets a call that compels him to order Chris to manage the dojo. When Johnny visits a hospital, Bobby, Tommy and Jimmy, all old Cobra Kai friends, meet him there. Tommy is ailing with cancer. The four spend the day hanging out since they know that Tommy does not have much time left to live and they want him to have fun on his last day. Tommy acknowledges having feelings for Ali that evening and tells Johnny to keep trying to alter his life's direction. The sudden death of Tommy leaves his pals devastated. When Johnny returns to his dojo, he discovers that Kreese has been poisoning the minds of his pupils, causing them to become corrupt and evil people. Outraged, Johnny orders Kreese to permanently leave the dojo. Johnny grows fond of Carmen, the mother of Miguel, but is disappointed to learn that she is seeing someone else. He beats her date outside of a club and makes him promise never to see her again after realizing that he is being unfaithful. The two then go on a date after he asks her out. However, Johnny and Daniel are both displeased when Daniel and his wife Amanda LaRusso arrive at the same restaurant and are forced to sit with Johnny and Carmen. After Johnny tells Daniel that he expelled Kreese from Cobra Kai, the two become friends, joke about him and seem to be getting along. At first, they brag about their own dojos. Johnny is pleased to learn from Carmen that the LaRusso family has admitted his kid to his alma mater. Someone knocks on Johnny's door after he returns from his date. When he answers the door, he assumes it's Carmen but is 
startled to discover Robbie and a buzzed Sam. He consents to them staying the night. The following day, he informs Robbie that he will need to tell Daniel what transpired, but Robbie advises him not to and says that he will bear the blame. When Daniel knocks on Johnny's door, however, Johnny acknowledges that Sam is inside but refuses to let Daniel in until he settles down and closes the door. Then, Daniel knocks the door open and the two get into a quick argument until Sam and Robbie step in. Sam is driven home furiously by Daniel. As Johnny drives Robbie to school on his first day, he and his son have an uneasy chat regarding the LaRussos while Johnny ignores Miguel's call. After Robbie kicks him from a railing at school, Johnny visits the hospital when Miguel is taken there by ambulance. Carmen accuses Johnny of causing Miguel's injuries and tells him she does not want to see him again while they're at the hospital. Johnny then hears a voicemail Miguel left earlier and peeked into his room where he is asleep which makes him cry and feel awful. Johnny returns to the dojo and observes Kreese working with a few of his pupils. Kreese informs him that he and the dojo's landlord agreed that he would assume complete control of the building. Hawk holds Kreese accountable for Miguel's injuries because he is currently training with some of Johnny's former pupils. Johnny storms out of the dojo in a rage after feeling deceived by Kreese and his pupils, but not before warning Kreese that Cobra Kai is his if he wants it. Johnny rushes to the beach and hurls his phone into the sand in a fury. The moment he sees the Cobra Kai insignia on his automobile, he tosses his keys into the vehicle and exits in disgust. He had written Ali a Facebook message, but he had no idea that Ali had added him as a friend. Uh, eagles don't have fangs. Johnny's Redemption and Eagle Fang Karate Following the school fight and him losing Cobra Kai, Johnny spends his days drinking in pubs to deal with his worries. He sees the news coverage of the West Valley High School fight on television. On the television, the police pretend to notify the public that they are looking for Robbie Keane, a West Valley High School student who has been missing since the altercation. Robbie is sought after the attack on Miguel Diaz, which left the All Valley Karate Champion unconscious and hurt. Johnny orders them to turn it back when a patron snatches the remote control and changes it to a football game, but they refuse. They return the remote control once the game is over and depart, making fun of Miguel for being the coma child whom nobody cared about. Johnny then pursues them outside and assaults them in their car after becoming enraged. Due to his inebriated state, he is quickly overcome and is apprehended by the police for instigating a fight. A police officer spots Johnny in a holding cell and inquires as to whether he is Robbie Keane's father. They briefly converse, with Johnny asserting that Robbie is a fine child despite the officer's perception that he is a troublemaker. After being freed from prison in the morning, he visits Miguel and his family in the hospital. He first tries to pass as a doctor after being rejected since he isn't family. In order to get into the intensive care unit, Johnny rams his head into a paper towel dispenser despite how impractical this was and is severely injured as a result. Miguel hears the pep talk the man gives the unconscious youngster telling him to fight because he can do it. Carmen finally asks Johnny to leave the space. After receiving his release, Johnny goes back to his flat and is met by a worried Daniel LaRusso. He is persuaded by Daniel to assist in finding Robbie before it's too late. The unusual duo sets out on a road trip to look for Robbie, but their divergent personalities and worldviews keep getting in the way. Their relationship begins with a tense reunion with Johnny's ex-girlfriend, Shannon Keane, before transitioning to a star startingly effortless good cop bad cop routine with Trey and Cruz, two of Robbie's old associates. When Johnny insisted on confronting the man, who was later joined by his crew, the unexpected vehicle pursuit with the thug who had stolen Robbie's van descended into violence. After defeating the goons, Johnny roughhouses one of the men during an interrogation and becomes enraged when Daniel drags him off. After a quarrel, their partnership quickly disintegrates and Johnny steals the vehicle that was formerly owned by the LaRusso Auto Company. He finds out that Robbie was detained by the police and is being housed in a juvenile detention facility. Bobby Brown is the pastor of a church where Johnny meets him. The sermon is nevertheless cut short by Johnny's noisy and inebriated behavior. Bobby is reminded of their shared history by him, but when Johnny doesn't go, 
Bobby knocks him out. When Johnny has a bloody nose, Bobby talks to him and teaches him to concentrate on the good things in life. The important thing is that he is needed right now by both Robbie and Miguel. Johnny wants to see Robbie, but his probation prevents him from doing so. Bobby volunteers his assistance since having a preacher there will ensure that Johnny can come by. Bobby also contributes financially to Miguel's operation to help him regain his ability to walk, but his assistance is insufficient. When Johnny asks his stepfather, Sid Weinberg, to contribute to Miguel's fund, Sid declines and makes derogatory remarks about Miguel. Johnny notices a valuable relic on a podium next to the door during his hasty departure. He takes the relic and sells it as a pawn for $2,500, exactly the amount required to pay for Miguel's operation. The next day, he makes an anonymous donation. When Miguel's grandmother sees him in the hospital, she begs Johnny to stay with them while Miguel is having surgery. Despite having a meeting with Robbie and Bobby at SJDC, Johnny decides to stay and support Miguel. After Miguel's operation, Johnny goes to the community service site to see Robbie. He enters the food line to chat with Robbie, but Robbie becomes upset when Johnny brings up Miguel and tries to correct him for his behavior. He retracts his remarks and reaches out to grab Robbie's arm, which causes the youngster to jerk and dump a pail of soup all over the place. Security leads Johnny out of the structure. He goes to a pub to mope around and is greeted there by a brazen John Kreese. According to Kreese, Johnny only lets him take Cobra Kai because he was acting cowardly. Johnny declines Kreese's invitation to come back to the dojo and train under him since he is aware of Kreese's lack of reliability. Instead, he visits Miguel, who is now awake and laments his inability to move his legs. Since Johnny can't reach his phone, he offers to help by putting the tray out of the way. He tells Miguel to stand up, go over and take the phone for himself, champion-like. To Johnny's dismay, Miguel follows the instruction but tumbles off the bed and onto the floor. Oh shit. It's all right, you felt like a champ. Miguel's flat is where Johnny often visits him to attempt different methods of inspiring Miguel to walk again. These included setting his shoelaces on fire, hanging risque magazines all over his wheelchair, and applying various additional pressures. Miguel is still unable to walk, thus they all fail. One evening, Johnny sees Carmen sobbing in front of their apartment, claiming that Miguel is depressed at the time. He never laughs or grins. After that, Johnny decides to take Miguel to a D. Snyder performance. They tell the bouncer that Miguel is dying and that going to charity is on his bucket list. They are let in and have a blast dancing, taking pictures and getting shout outs from the lead vocalist. Johnny is thrilled to notice that Miguel is unconsciously tapping his foot to the music a behavior he can then repeat on order. Johnny goes back to his flat and uses his computer to learn how to utilize Facebook. He first discovers Ali Mills' friend request while looking through the concert-related images of him and Miguel. He accepts the request with joy. When Ali inquires about his 30-year hiatus, he becomes anxious about what to write to her. Miguel is horrified by his lengthy letter to her since it comes off as desperate. His profile is empty, so Miguel assists him in filling it out. Miguel grudgingly agrees to assist Johnny as he chooses to capture pictures of himself engaging in all of Ali's favorite activities. Together, they spend the day doing various things, including experiencing sushi for the first time, while Miguel takes pictures of him. After pretending to like it for the photos, he spits it out in disgust. He finds Miguel agitated when he emerges from the restroom. Miguel loses it when they go back to Johnny's place to try the walking harness again since he feels that Johnny is responsible for his predicaments. He accuses Johnny of being weak and for allowing Chris to take his pupils. While Johnny is arguing that he shouldn't have brought Cobra Kai back, Miguel can be seen approaching him. Their disagreement ends when he points out the steps that Miguel has taken. That evening, Johnny tries to write Ali the ideal response by being honest with her about his life. He tells her about his friendship with Miguel 
and his efforts to improve himself and assist children. He believes it is too long and deletes everything to convey a short message. Now that things are going well, including Miguel's ability to walk unassisted, Johnny thinks of starting a new dojo. He struggles to come up with a name, a location, and a way to attract kids, but Miguel pledges to conduct some recruitment at the school. Johnny searches for the ideal place while keeping a tight budget in the meantime. In the end, he chooses to teach in a park because it's a free area. After meeting his former pupils and admitting his errors, he is confronted by Mitch, Bert, and other people that Kreese expelled from Cobra Kai because they were too weak. The name of the dojo, Johnny informs the tiny gathering, is Eagle Fang Karate. He disregards their insistence that eagles lack teeth. When Kreese and his pupils show up in the park, it causes tension because it shows that there is still animosity between them. Chris makes one more attempt to get Johnny to rejoin Cobra Kai, but he vehemently rejects it. Robbie gets freed from Juvie in a few days. On the day of his son's release, Johnny waits for him and is astonished to discover Daniel there as well. When Robbie, who has now been released, intervenes and irately urges both of them to leave him alone, they are set to fight and dispute. As requested, Johnny concentrates on the postponed All Valley Karate Tournament. Along with John Kreese and Daniel LaRusso, he attends a city council meeting to advocate for tournament. He challenges Sensei to an argument in front of the council, casts doubt on the competition, and persuades the committee to call off the event. They are unable to salvage the tournament until Miguel and Sam stand on the podium. Carmen pays Johnny a visit that evening to express her gratitude for everything he has done to help Miguel regain his ability to walk and lift his spirits. That night, they share a kiss and their bed. The following day, everything is ideal for them, despite the fact that Carmen must leave for work before breakfast. He's glad to see Ali is in town for the holidays and wants to meet as he checks his social media. He concurs, so they go out to lunch and then go back to golf and stuff to talk about their earlier years. He accepts her invitation to a charity event that evening, even if he has to dress in a suit. Just in time to watch Ali hugging Daniel, he enters in a stylish white suit. The evening turns out to be unexpectedly enjoyable thanks to Amanda and Ali's attendance. They all share tales from their formative years. When Daniel departs, Ali and Johnny say their goodbyes on a happy note since she pardons him for his actions in high school and he finds comfort in how their relationship ended. After witnessing blood on Miguel's face, he heads to Carmen's house to reveal his genuine affection for her, but Johnny instead goes to Cobra Kai to finally take out Kreese. He barges in just as Kreese is showing Robbie how to strike forward. According to Kreese, the three generations of Cobra Kai will melt this whole snowflake generation. But Johnny punches Kreese in the face to refuse his offer to work with him. Johnny gains the upper hand when the struggle spills into the dojo's main room. They start fighting viciously. When Robbie steps in to defend Kreese, he just almost defeats Kreese. He criticizes Johnny for causing him anguish. Robbie is determined to release his pent-up rage, but Johnny immediately defends himself and declines to fight his son. He charges at Johnny while yelling that Johnny is to blame for everything horrible that has ever happened to him, including his trauma in juvie. Robbie attacks Johnny, but Johnny blocks him and unintentionally sends him into the lockers. To Johnny's dismay, Robbie knocks his head and loses consciousness. He crouches down close to his kid to check on him, but Kreese grabs a sigh and stabs Johnny in the back. Then he puts Johnny in a potentially deadly chokehold by forcing him into it. Just in time, Daniel comes. Angry about being sent to Daniel's residence, Kreese is confronted by Daniel. While Johnny recovers from the severe chokehold, Daniel and Kreese continue to battle. Daniel is raised into the air by Kreese and they fall through the school's glass entrance. By picking up a piece of glass, Kreese threatens to bring Daniel and Miyagi back together. Daniel uses pressure point assaults to significant effect, rendering Kreese defenseless. Daniel is in the middle of a strike when Johnny exits the dojo and nods in agreement. When Sam calls for her father after arriving with Miguel, he is about to deliver the killing blow on Kreese. Having triumphed, Daniel moves to Johnny and orders Kreese to keep his Cobra Kais away from their children. Daniel's position is shared by Johnny, however, 
increase prefers to settle disputes through competition, the defeated dojo will depart from the valley. Just as Robbie exits the dojo, instructing everyone to go, Johnny and Daniel agree to stipulations. Johnny is upset by Robbie's partnership but returns home for the time being. As they prepare for the competition that will decide not only the future of their respective dojos but also the future of the valley, he and Daniel combine their respective dojos. And what were we meant to be, Johnny? Men. Joining hands with Daniel to defeat Cobra Kai, Johnny and Daniel's alliance has difficulties at first since they have similar objectives but find it difficult to cooperate. Johnny gets to know Carmen and the Diaz family better while they are back at the Diaz apartment. He reluctantly agrees to her request to take things slowly. Daniel tries to meditate with Miyagi Do's as Johnny hazes Hawk into Eagle Fang in the dojo. After a violent debate about their different karate techniques, the two abruptly terminate their respective lessons. In reference to Rocky III, when the two polar opposites had to cooperate to beat a more potent antagonist, Miguel exhorts Johnny to be the Apollo Creed to Daniel's Rocky. When Daniel shows up there, he offers Johnny a beer and apologizes for the day's happenings as Johnny is ready to take Miguel's advice. Being co-senseis doesn't work this time and their temporary harmony is short-lived. They are prepared to inform the youngsters of their choice the next day only to find out that Hawk has an idea to construct an Okinawan sparring platform that would act as a bridge between the two dojos. The pupils have all agreed to pitch in. Johnny and Daniel are moved by their children's courage to speak out, so they accept the decision and keep working together. They concur that getting to know one another's karate techniques will increase their mutual respect and understanding. Johnny learns defensive tactics how to achieve an inner equilibrium and Miyagi-Do karate fundamentals. When Daniel tells Johnny that Miyagi-Do has twice saved his life, Johnny is impressed by the style's power. Daniel endures the challenging eagle fang procedure, which involves climbing a chain rope, doing knuckle push-ups, learning to be aggressive rather than defensive, and addressing his phobias. Despite Johnny causing conflict between Daniel and the hockey team, the two men eventually become closer and go to a hockey game together as part of Daniel's training. Johnny applies Daniel's Miyagi-Do instruction to no be there while he battles with the squad. Johnny is sparring with Daniel and his pupils at Miyagi-Do. Johnny offers Daniel his sandwich and takes his gyoza. He reveals that he and Carmen are taking things slowly during the dinner with Daniel and the LaRussos. Anthony becomes irate because Johnny is astonished to see how much he has grown while he's at his place. Daniel and Johnny assure each other that they will switch pupils before the meal is through. Miyagi-Do is taken to a building where Johnny instructs them to leap from one roof to another. He responds with Sam's prior interactions with Johnny when Sam emphasizes how hazardous it is. Sam eventually has a change of heart and leaps to the following roof, dazzling Johnny and Miyagi-Do. When he returns to the Diaz flat, he gives Carmen an official first kiss. He witnesses Daniel giving Miguel the Miyagi-Do headband when he returns to the Miyagi-Do dojo and becomes envious. Johnny becomes sidetracked while teaching Miyagi-Do a combination when Daniel is working with Miguel. Dimitri uses his diversion to his advantage and kicks him in the face. Dimitri gets tied up by Johnny in retaliation and his classmates kick him. Back at his flat, he and Miguel go through their memories. As they look at his beer can, he gets a flashback about his mother marrying Sid and furiously tosses the can away. In Johnny's apartment, Robbie confronts his father about Eagle Fang's abuse of Kenny. When Robbie asserts that there will be retaliation, Johnny cautions him against lousy behavior and reminds him of his expulsion. Additionally, he informs him of Cobra Kai and how Kreese is brainwashing him in a similar manner to how he had been brainwashed all those years back. Johnny hears from his pupils at Miyagi-Do about Miyagi-Do and Eagle Fang's encounter with Cobra Kai at the drive-in. He objects to Miguel's ruse, but Daniel applauds it and informs Johnny that they finished the altercation without anybody getting wounded. When Silver and his former sensei, Kreese, come to Miyagi-Do, Johnny is about to speak with Daniel. Kreese and Johnny discuss their collaboration with Daniel in their conversation. He threatens to use the Miyagi-Do sign to shove it into Kreese if he doesn't leave Miyagi-Do. Johnny is upset when Daniel informs him about Silver in a bar and threatens to take over the training due to their previous interactions. He and Daniel agree to a rematch 
and whoever prevails will take over the training. Later, as Johnny starts his training, he is reminded of his interactions with Daniel. When Miguel appears, he explains how to defeat Daniel to him. Miguel, however, declines to participate in his training and shows little interest in Daniel and Johnny's conflict. Johnny and Daniel debate about their lessons and who is better in Miyagi-Do. Daniel and Johnny battle tying the contest. They both stumble when they don't know who prevailed. When Hawk comes, he demonstrates to the opposing dojos how Robbie almost destroyed his mohawk. Daniel refuses Johnny's offer that Cobra Kai will cover the cost. Daniel responds that his lessons would put his students in the hospital or jail when he reprimands him for applauding Miguel for the sprinkler incident. Eagle Fang departs after realizing the fusion failed. Johnny becomes aware of the latest tournament information. Miguel says they need a female member as he becomes irate with them. Johnny dismisses Bert's suggestion that he may know a girl on the school debate team. When Miguel mentions that Sam will be coming back, Johnny similarly opposes the notion. Johnny and Miguel try to find a female student at the West Valley High School soccer field but are unsuccessful. Moon rejects the two's approach and their offer. Moon advises them to speak with Piper. When they discover Piper in a gymnastics center, they invite her to join their dojo and she accepts. Miguel compliments Johnny for talking to Piper. Mitch corrects Johnny about how long they've been waiting for her but stops chatting when he turns around. They are outraged when Eagle Fang hears that she has joined Cobra Kai. Johnny and Miguel accompany Bert to see a debate trial when Johnny recalls Bert's suggestion. Throughout the discussion, they keep an eye on Devin Lee. Johnny is amazed by her short temper and signs her up for Eagle Fang. Miguel recognizes Johnny and Carmen as they come up to him to chat about their relationship and assures Carmen that if she's happy, He's happy. Johnny presents Devin Lee, their new female pupil, to his class before Eagle Fang's lesson. Johnny informs Devin that he only accepts sensei and students when she says to the pupils that her preferred pronouns are she and her. Johnny corrects Devin but orders her to keep quiet. When class begins, Johnny is struck by her familiarity with the film Bloodsport. Miguel is made co-sensei as part of his instruction on cheating and filthy techniques used by Cobra Kai. Johnny instructs his trainees to spar with one arm during the initial round of training. Utilizing their additional senses is the next step. He attempts to hurl dirt in Mitch's eyes, but instead bumps him into a bookcase. Devin kicks all the male pupils in the crotch, which makes the exercise more intense. In a talk between Miguel and Johnny, Johnny expresses his desire to be Miguel's father. Sam joins them after they finish talking and Miguel agrees as Johnny shows Miguel a pile of watermelons. Before Sam and Miguel's prom, Johnny and the Diaz family join the LaRussos for a photo op with the two of them. Shannon Keane tells Johnny about her meeting with Silver when he comes home. She reveals that he gave her cash and gave Robbie a vehicle. Shannon concludes by stating that he must handle them. Shannon concludes by stating that he must handle them. When Johnny arrives at Cobra Kai, he picks up Silver's phone call and warns him to keep Robbie far away. Silver advises him to go to Magnolia and Lancashire, saying that he is familiar with the area when Johnny threatens to beat him up. Johnny finds out that the location is the first Cobra Kai dojo. Kreese, who was present in the dojo, had refrained from killing him because of his hesitant relationship with Johnny. Silver engaged Johnny in a battle when he arrived and eventually defeated him. After the altercation, Johnny drinks away his grief. Miguel is furious when Johnny nicknames him Robbie as Miguel takes him to his room. Johnny instructs his pupils to prepare for the All Valley Karate Tournament on the day of the competition. Johnny draws Miguel aside to talk to him about the altercation at Stingray's after party. Johnny talks about his prom experiences before concluding that he should concentrate on the tournament and make up with Sam afterwards. Johnny is unhappy as they are placed sixth in the skills competition. Devin informs him of the points advancement but Johnny is unconcerned. After Devin advises him to prevail in the one-on-one -on -one battles, he experiences a change of heart. Daniel and Johnny are arguing about how Miguel and Sam are influenced by their various teachings after Johnny approaches Daniel. They warn one another to keep a safe distance from one another. Miguel informs Eli before their battle that he's already defeated Eli and knocks him to the ground. Miguel prepares to do the flying tornado kick during the match, but he strains a muscle halting the action. 
Johnny, Carmen and Rosa see Miguel being treated by the doctor. They are all they are all relieved when she explains to the three that Miguel's injury is simply a pulled muscle. Then, when he's prepared to return to the battle, Johnny tells Miguel to demonstrate his dominance. Later, Chris tells Johnny that he is unaware that Silver is planning to beat him in the last dojo. Additionally, he reminded him that only Robbie could give Cobra Kai the win and that losing would have an impact on him. Johnny concludes by declaring that Cobra Kai will lose. He later offers Miguel some cream and encourages him to return right away. He challenges him to demonstrate his mettle. Miguel gets eliminated alongside Eagle Fang because despite his motivation, he doesn't come back. Before the ladies' final, Daniel and Johnny, Daniel acknowledges the value of his lessons. Additionally, Johnny expresses regret to Daniel for seeming envious of Miguel and him growing close and acknowledges that he should have let Daniel train with Miguel so that he might have been a better fighter. After making amends, the two work together to support Sam in her conflict with Tori. Johnny is surprised during the battle when Sam gives Tori an eagle fan kick, giving her the round one victory. When the score is 2-2, Sam and Tori get into a struggle, but she unintentionally gets struck in the elbow, prompting the referee to warn them that the point should be taken away, much to Johnny's chagrin. Despite their renewed cooperation, Cobra Kai triumphs against Sam to win the title of Grand Champion. Johnny and Daniel bring Sam back to the sidelines as she is vanquished. Johnny glares at Robbie, who is dejected despite having assisted Cobra Kai in winning, while Silver declares his desire to franchise Cobra Kai. Johnny and Eagle Fang were unaware that Terry had paid the referee to assist Tori and Cobra Kai in winning. When Carmen and Rosa hear that Johnny is trying to find Miguel, they inform him that he took an Uber home before the finals. Johnny first visits the Cobra Kai dojo and and observes the phrase posted on the wall before proceeding to the Diaz family's residence. He remembers the moment when he initially opened the dojo. When Robbie sees him, he informs him that Cobra Kai is growing. Despite Johnny's accolades, Robbie refused to discuss his performance at the event. He reveals how his time in Cobra Kai influenced him and how Kenny's mentoring of him led to his corruption. Johnny informs Robbie that he doesn't accept this and claims he ruined the relationship that Robbie and Daniel had. Robbie disagrees and the two embrace, making amends in the process. Then, when he visits Carmen, she hands him a letter that Miguel composed. Miguel will travel to Mexico City to search for his biological father, but Carmen informs Johnny that Miguel is unknown to him. When she expresses her desire to bring Miguel home, Johnny makes a pledge to do so. Because tonight, Cobra Kai is gonna die. Bringing down Cobra Kai For a father-son bonding excursion, Johnny and Robbie travel to Mexico. Robbie wonders what they're actually doing in Mexico. They're here to find Miguel, who is looking for his long-lost father, Johnny reveals. Since Robbie and Tori could be returning to the valley, Robbie is unhappy about the falsehoods and Miguel's involvement. Although Johnny regrets lying, he wants Miguel and him to stop talking nonsense. He's prepared to learn from his past errors and is aware that he must take action this time. Johnny offers his kid the opportunity to catch the bus back to America after replacing a flat tire from almost striking a caravan. Still, he hopes he'll remain so they can create some lasting memories. Johnny almost becomes a victim of pickpocketing as he goes to the beach to ask several surfers whether they've seen Miguel. He requests the map that reveals where Miguel was transported after seeing the fraud. The surfer is unwilling to give up easily. Before Robbie does a flying sidekick and saves Johnny, another surfer is poised to strangle him with a surfing cable. They engage in a seashore confrontation with the surfers and prevail. Refreshments are their next stop, but his truck must be towed because Johnny can't speak Spanish. To get the truck back, they still need another hundred dollars. They look for quick money-making opportunities with a chili pepper competition appearing to be the best option. Robbie prevents Johnny from going in since he can do it himself. He receives Johnny's support and wins the competition and the money. The last pepper wasn't really consumed by Robbie. Instead, he traded it for a gummy, 
which Johnny dubs the most badass move ever once they're in the car. Following a tip from Carmen, they search for probable hiding places for Miguel until they come across an MMA arena. They inquire about Hector Salazar, unintentionally attracting the notice of one of Hector's guys who believe their FBI shirts to be authentic. Johnny is prevented from approaching Hector by the MMA fighters. Robbie gets ready to assist his father in fighting the guys, but Johnny forbids it because it's his war. The gang fights while the ringside reporter calls Johnny the White Lightning and calls out the play-by-play. -play. The MMA warriors beat up Johnny and he was about to lose a chokehold until Robbie threw him in his uneaten pepper. He wins by rubbing it in the opponent's eye. Hector and Miguel are able to flee thanks to the fight since they both think that the FBI is chasing them. Finally, Johnny comes across Miguel in front of a convenience shop. The youngster is phoning Carmen because he's experiencing mental distress as a result of realizing that his father is not who he thought he was. He hugs Johnny in the middle of the street and says he's ready to go home as Johnny consoles the hurt youngster. Robbie exits the vehicle and surveys the action. When Johnny returns to Reseda, he continues to date Carmen and establishes himself as a significant figure in Miguel and Rosa's life. When Carmen begins to feel ill, she clarifies to Johnny that she could be pregnant by saying that she's a few days late. He works extra hard to show both himself and her that he's prepared for this next stage of their life. After learning that they're expecting a kid, he makes changes to his view on life and baby-proofs his flat. He's excited about the new stage of their lives. He pledges to be present at every stage despite being terrified and unwilling to be absent the same way he was for Robbie. He hires himself out as a ride-sharing and food delivery driver with Dimitri's assistance in setting up the technical aspects of his new position. His rating swiftly drops to one star, making him the app's lowest rated driver. Lyle, who remarks on Johnny's new work, receives lunch from him. Since he has a family, Johnny can't resign, although he wishes he could. He starts to whine until Lyle insists that he despises his work as well. He does it so he can be with his wife and three children, even though he doesn't want to run pawn shops. None of the three children or his wife, whom Johnny will never get to know, are his. To protect the people they love, they must make sacrifices. Johnny takes the advice to heart and chooses to have Robbie spend the summer with him rather than Shannon's parents. When the woman accepts the agreement, he is instructed to pick up Robbie from the water park. Johnny arrives just in time for Robbie and Miguel to start fighting in the parking lot. Although his first few attempts, ambushing them at Olive Garden and setting up an impromptu Wild West escape chamber in his apartment failed, Johnny vows to persuade Robbie and Miguel to put their differences behind them. For once, Johnny is forced to be the steady one after a surprise visit from a little deranged Daniel. Johnny laments that he's put the turmoil with the dojos behind them as they converse over drinks. It's enough of a victory for him that Kreese is behind bars and Robbie is not with Cobra Kai. Johnny advises Daniel to focus on his family instead of trying to save all the children in the valley. Daniel also advises him to deal with Miguel and Robbie in the manner favored by Johnny Lawrence. With his trademark quiet yell, Johnny wakes up both Miguel and Robbie from their flats with an air horn. He releases Sensei Lawrence and orders the two to put their fists where their mouths are because he's had enough of their theatrics. Last night, they stated any time at any place, so now is the time and location. Just the two of them, no competition regulations, no protective equipment. They'll battle till everything has left their bodies. The lads square up and get into a rather vicious fight. Johnny attempts to break up the fight by yelling at them from below as it overflows onto the balcony on the second story. Johnny rushes up the steps to disperse them so that history won't be repeated as they fight around the railing. By the time he arrives, the guys have come to a consensus and are expressing regret for their earlier errors and contributions to one another's harm. Johnny is happy that they resolved their agreement since he couldn't see them continuing to argue after the kid was born. Both lads are stunned by this and Johnny is conscious of having slipped up. When he and Carmen inform them, he instructs them to act as though they're thrilled. As they, con as they congratulate Johnny on the good news, Robbie beams and Miguel exclaims with joy, holy crap. When Carmen gets home, the group has already left for the Olive Garden. She is happy that Johnny was able to reconcile them and she welcomes Robbie back to their home at any time. Chosen takes Johnny to Topanga Karate, where they reflect on their behavior against Daniel. 
The eagle fangs and he bow to Daniel as they reach Miyagi-Do later with Chosen. John Kreese, a former Cobra Kai sensei, is visited in jail by Daniel and Johnny. He shares with him a period when Terry Silver and he trained with Kim Sun Young and participated in the Sekai Taikai competition. According to Kreese, Cobra Kai will go international if they win the competition. In a meeting with the Sekai Taikai organizers, Johnny, Daniel and Chosen presented their collective expertise and informed the selection committee that their pupils should be eligible. The committee's chairman, Gunther, is impressed by their methods of instruction. He meets with Miguel, Robbie and Eli to discuss who would represent the boys in the boys' demonstration while having supper with the LaRussos. Eli volunteers to represent Miguel and Robbie. Sam triumphs in her bout despite Ellie losing, while Miyagi Do and Eagle Fang advance to the tournament. Johnny joins Carmen at her ultrasound the next day. They run into Terry Silver after they go. Silver congratulates him on making it, but informs him that he will carry on on Cobra Kai's legacy in the future. He tells Daniel, Amanda and Louis at LaRusso Auto and they are all pleased for him. Louis brings everyone to a club to celebrate. Back in the limo, he, Chosen and Daniel are having a good time but as they proceed, they are all surprised to discover that they are confined while the driver is intoxicated. When Johnny runs into Mike Barnes, Daniel and Chosen intervene to stop the brawl. Despite being inebriated, Chosen accompanies Mike after hearing about his vengeance strategy. They engage in combat with the other Cobra Kai sensei when they go to Silver's residence. He is too strong for the senseis, but after seeing the ultrasound result, he regains his stamina and fights back. Mike enters and assists him in defeating the senseis before one of them is able to kill him off. He meets Carmen again at the Cobra Kai training center. By that time, Tori and the other Miyagi-Do students had already exposed Silver and uploaded the video proving that Silver had paid off the referee. Eagles do not respond. They swoop down and take whatever they want. Marvelous Verdict Although the Karate Kid franchise and the subsequent Cobra Kai series have produced some iconic characters, none of them have a character arc like Johnny Lawrence. From the bully from the movies who stood up for what is right to the sensei who gave teenagers a purpose, he has come a long way. And with the series venturing into its sixth season, Johnny has a lot of potential to flourish further. Learning to take up responsibilities as a father is also among them. Despite feeling fatherly towards Robbie and Miguel, it's time for him to step up and take accountability for Carmen's upcoming pregnancy. If you enjoyed this video, please like the video. And for more exciting videos on the Karate Kid and Cobra Kai, please subscribe to our channel. One of the best ways to get a point is to aim for the torso. <laughs> Right, front kick, side kick.